We have been in this farmhouse for five years now, well, almost. Can you believe it? It's, it's really hard to believe for me. And the vision I had for this place whenever we first got it has changed quite a bit. My style has changed and I've been adding things over time. Today, I'm gonna share with you some things I've been working on. A cozy and comfortable home really takes shape over the years, adding as you add to your story, as your family grows, as you age and learn new things, see new places, read books, grow in your skills, as you go about collecting, whether that be from antique shops or handmade items, art pieces, curating fabrics and paint colors. We've done several renovations on this house. Right behind me, you can see the wood stove that we added in, I believe the second winter we are here, a fresh new wallpaper in the stairway area, vinyl rug, paint colors added in the cabinets behind me. There is no place in this farmhouse that we haven't touched. And I really enjoy layering and adding over the years. One thing that I've been putting off doing is curtains in our boys' rooms. As the days get longer, so around March and April, I really start thinking about it. But obviously, I am just now getting to finish these up as the days are getting shorter. But that is okay. It's a process. And a lot of times, the reason things take me so long in this house isn't always the amount of time needed to complete the projects. That's definitely part of it but also my style and wanting to be sure that the pieces I really invest in, the things that I'm spending lots of time and money on are what I want and will serve our family well. And sometimes it just takes living in a home a while before that really is apparent. I'm a person who really enjoys design. I was talking to my sister the other day, actually we talk about this a lot. She has a desire for her home to take on a certain style, but she doesn't really enjoy the process of looking for things. She definitely doesn't love sewing or any kind of DIY. And so for her, it's more of a discipline to get on Pinterest and try to hone in on her style. I told her she needs to go on and look at a few Pinterest images and just put together a board so that we can see some common threads and see what it is she likes that we can make her space serve her family. For me, that's fun. I am guilty of wanting to lay in the bathtub for two hours on Pinterest. It's a little harder now that I have a newborn, but I enjoy that kind of thing. And I came across probably over a year ago now, some curtains that I really liked. A blogger had written a post with this exact fabric. I liked the way they were pleated. I liked how they were lined. I went on the website and saw that the curtains were, I think it was gonna be like $8,000 for the panels for my boys room. So although this fabric was pricey, it was not even close to as pricey if I had bought them. So I decided that I was going to make them myself by image searching the fabric, finding the exact fabric, and basically recreating them. Now I got three panels in, and you probably saw whenever I was opening the fabric that I was still pregnant, so this was a while ago, and I wasn't very far along, before I realized that it was gonna take me forever to finish up this project. So it turned into a bit of a collaborative effort. I sewed three panels, and then I brought one of them over to a seamstress in my town, and she sewed the other five but then she handed them back to me without the pleats in the top. So it was a little bit of back and forth, but they are finally done. Now, the way that this worked, if you wanna sew something similar to this, I bought blackout fabric and I will leave links below. Hopefully I can find them. <laughs> if I can find them all, I will leave the links below for everything I use for this project. But I bought blackout liner fi fabric. I bought this home decor weight fabric and I sandwiched them together, right sides together. The width of the lining fabric is a few inches narrower than the home decor fabric. So whenever I sewed the sides right side together and flipped it out, that made it to where it pulled the sides of the home decor weight fabric to the back because it was shorter, the liner fabric was shorter. Hopefully that makes sense, but I didn't have to worry about margins. These two fabrics sandwiched together actually worked perfectly without having to do any adjusting there. And then I didn't sew the bottom hem until I put the blackout liner in it. So that way that was hidden inside. And then I folded the top part over but I didn't have to finish that because I'm sewing pleater tape right over top where the blackout liner meets the top. Hopefully that makes sense. So I folded it over, laid the blackout on it, and then put that pleater tape, sewed that along the top to finish the spot off where there would have been a raw edge from the home decor weight fabric 
and the liner fabric. So basically just big lined rectangles that I then had to pleat, which is so, so easy, but so tedious, but it gives it such a tailored, beautiful look. A few years ago on this channel, I shared how I turned Ikea curtains into some beautiful, almost custom looking curtains by doing pleats. You can visit that video for some more up close instructions, but essentially you put the pleater hooks into the pleater tape, skip to little tabs, so that way you have a space between the pleats all the way down the pleater tape. That's it. It's really tedious, but really easy. And then I like to finish it off with a little stitch on top of each pleat so they come together there at the bottom. I just hand stitch that on. It just gives it an even more tailored look that I personally love. Now, when I first started decorating this farmhouse, I did everything light and airy, and I'm really craving some weight. It's because of the Victorian style of our house and the tall ceilings. All right, I wanna take a break from these farmhouse updates and projects to tell you about today's video sponsor, Birch Living. Birch Living is a natural and organic mattress company that make products that are both comfortable and don't have the harmful off-gassing that can happen in the conventional manufacturing process of mattresses. We spend a large portion of our lives asleep for young kids that can be up to half of their day and then for us a third. So it makes sense that when we are in so many other areas of our home sourcing quality foods, sourcing quality body products, that our sleep environment doesn't get neglected. We have three Birch mattresses. We have two in the kids' room that are the twin size, they're the standard, well-loved natural Birch mattress. And then we also have the Lux, which is a premium upgrade. It's crafted with eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. The Lux model features an added quilted organic pillow Euro top, non-toxic latex that relieves pressure points, it has targeted zone lumbar support, which provides enhanced contouring. It also has over 1,000 individually wrapped steel coils to cradle your body and limit motion transfer. Super comfortable. Birch is delivered right to your door. It comes very easy to assemble. It doesn't require a lot of time, tools, manpower. It also ships free within the US, making it super easy and convenient. I'm confident that you will love Birch as much as us, but I know it can be scary to get something that you'd really prefer to try out. That's why Birch offers a 100 night sleep trial. You can be confident that you will love it for many years to come. It also has a 25 year warranty. I love my Birch and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can use the link birchliving.com forward slash farmhouse. You can also use the QR code here to get 20% off plus two free pillows. For your little ones, check out the Birch Kids Natural Mattress, which is the 2023 Good Housekeeping Parent Awards winner. Another place that I'm wanting to add some weighted heavy drapes is in the boys room that's next door to the other boys room. So I'm looking at fabric swatches today. My main goal is to find one that fits into the decor of both rooms because they're adjoining, but then also gives this room its own style. So I'm thinking blues and greens, and I also threw this copper in here because it goes so well with the rug that's in this other boys room. And I actually think I'm gonna go with that and end up doing sort of that green color on the wall, which will tie into the green on the stairs, but then also it will fit in with the boys' room. There's also that same green in the rug of that room. And then the next door room will have the tans and the blues with the blue patterned vintage wool rug. And so then although the boys' room colors and curtains will be different, I'm tying them together with vintage wool rugs and they have all for the same exact quilt. So hopefully you see what I'm saying. I will end up sharing as we actually complete all of this. Again, who knows, this could be a year from now that I actually get those curtains completed, but I am moving in the direction of making those two rooms both have these not light and airy drapes, but the structured. I'm looking for that structure. Every time I add a little bit of that into this home, I find that the pattern and the structure really complement it very well. So I'm, I'm leaning into a lot more patterns in the soft goods like pillows and rugs, and then also some color in the curtains on the walls with the wallpaper. I have so many ideas spinning around my head and each time I add something and layer it in, even when it doesn't match perfectly, but it just gives it a more collected feel. It just feels so cozy. The more I, the more I add it, the more I like it. 
at some point I think there could be diminishing returns on that and I, I would maybe not. But so far I'm having fun continuing with collecting different fabrics and colors and patterns. One place that I really wanted to just, a very subtle thing, but I wanted to change the pillow covers in our living room that are sitting on the wingback chairs that I slip covered. I spied some pillow covers on Etsy that I really liked, but they were $80 a piece. So I pinned them on Pinterest and then they have that visual search where it'll pull up things from the internet that are the same pattern. So I was able to find the exact same fabric on Etsy and then I had my daughter, I told her I would hire her to complete the pillow covers. I didn't really feel like I had the time to do this myself, even though it was a project she seriously got done in one morning really fast. I did help her cut things out because I wanted the flowers centered on the squares. I didn't just want them cut off in a weird spot. So we were really mindful of that. But we completed this project for, I think, like a fourth of the price. So I thought, you know what? I think that makes a lot more sense whenever you're looking at some of these higher end things. I don't wanna spend $160 on two pillow covers. They still weren't cheap, but they were way, 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 way cheaper than that. So to make pillow covers, I mean, it's so, so easy. You essentially just cut the square out with an inch of seam allowance. So I wanted 20 by 20 inch pillow covers. So we cut the square 21 by 21 and then two overlapping pieces for the back. I had a linen tablecloth that we weren't using. Now we could have used the same fabric on the back, but it was more expensive. So we decided to just go with the linen on the back. In fact, the pillow covers that I was spying on Etsy also had a different color on the back. So they didn't even splurge to put the nice fabric on the back either because you really won't see it. So then you just hem the overlapping edges of the back fabric pieces. So the linen in this case, overlap them, layer them right sides together, pin all the way around, sew all the way around. These can be completed in like less than an hour. I had an idea to make these even more custom by taking this pillow cover up to Joann's or wherever that sells embroidery thread, finding one of the colors, and then going over one part of the pattern, whether it's the yellow part or the green part or the pinkish part with the embroidery thread. But the problem is you'd have to do it on all of that one particular color. I think it would make it even more custom looking, but I really kind of counted the cost and thought that my time would be better spent elsewhere. I could get my daughter to do it, but again, I'm not sure that the added effort would yield a product that I liked as much more for the effort involved. Hopefully that makes sense, but I think that'd be really cool if you wanted to find something with maybe a bit less of one color. So if there's just a small amount of one color, and go over that with embroidery floss to make that part of it pop out, that would be even more custom. There are so many things you can do in your home like that. Like I showed last year on here, how to make pleated lampshades with some hot glue and some fabric. And it takes a regular lamp just up to a custom lamp, one that you would see on one of the websites where it's $300 for a lampshade or whatever. I love projects like that in my home to continue to elevate it and give it a designer style, but without having to purchase from actual designer websites. One of the first projects that we completed in this farmhouse, actually the only major project, a lot of what we did in this house was just makeup, is the kitchen renovation because I really wanted to have a farmhouse, cozy country style. And when we first revealed it, I didn't have any curtains on any of the windows and I've only since added some pleated curtains on the big window above the sink. I really liked how that turned out. I shared a tutorial here on how I actually did that last winter. And since then I've thought, I wonder how it would look if we put some cafe curtains on the other two big windows. I'm always concerned about losing light, but every time I add in something in this house with a little bit of pattern, I always end up really appreciating it and thinking that it looks plain when I see pictures from before I added it. So I thought that it probably would be really pretty to get some more of the same linen fabric that I used above the windows above the sink and make some little cafe curtains for the other two windows. Clearly little Victor does not like his swing. Every time I have a new baby, I always get on Facebook Marketplace and buy a Mama Roo swing and then I always sell it whenever the baby no longer needs it. It's just a short little phase. I don't like storing them, but it's nice to have a place to 
stick the baby every once in a while, like when you're working in the kitchen and you want to set them down for a minute, but yet uh, kids are running around everywhere. But he doesn't really love being in it. So I'm going to rock him and sew all at the same time. I did some measurements and for these curtains to hit about halfway down the window, so cafe curtain style, they needed to be 35 inches long. Now I decided to do tabs at the top. So I took two inches off the length because I knew that the tabs would add two inches to it. But then of course I had to account for the hem and all of that. I ended up with about a 12 by 12 inch linen square whenever I was all done with this. And that's when you know that you did a really good job ordering the fabric and then cutting the fabric. A lot of times I won't necessarily worry about the width of the curtain. I'll just cut the fabric down the middle and half lengthwise and whatever that ends up being, as long as I have my length, the width, I can just kind of work with whatever the fabric offers. So that's what I did. I cut it in half and then I cut four pieces 35 inches in length and then I use the strip that was left over to cut tabs from it. I wanted the tabs to be about two inches wide so I cut them five inches so that when I folded them in half and sewed them down when I turned them right side out they'd be about two inches wide and then if I folded them in half lengthwise about three inches so that once I tucked them under the hem of the curtain, they would pop out and add two inches to the length. It's just a little bit of basic math. I tell my kids this all the time when they ask why they need math. Well, I use math all the time in my homemaking. I use it in my recipe development. I use it in sewing projects. Uh, so many DIY projects that Luke and I work on, math is very important. In order to find where these tabs go, I almost always do five because five is where if you put two tabs or pleats or whatever it is you're working with on the outside edges of the piece and then fold it in half, that's where the middle one goes and then fold both outsides to the middle of the half, that's where the others go. So if you have five, you don't have to do any measuring and dividing. It's just really easy to find tab placement or pleat placement or whatever. So essentially to make these little cafe curtains, I did this in an afternoon, one afternoon, so easy. Basically, you just hem the three sides, the two long sides and the bottom, and then you make the tabs by folding the rectangles in half down the side, turning them right side out, folding them in half underneath the top hem. So you don't wanna do the top hem until you have the tabs done so you can catch those tabs underneath the top hem. This is just a fast way to do things. I sometimes like these elaborate projects and sometimes I just wanna get stuff really done and have a fast reward for my efforts. I found these brass cafe curtain rods online. Again, I'll try to find everything for all of these projects that I'm showing you today and link it below. I like these because they're cut to order so they fit perfectly in my window and nothing about my old farmhouse is standard. So whenever things can be cut to length, that's actually really good. One thing that's kind of cool about these, there's a little bit of margin because of the way the sides thread into the rod. There's, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. If I would have been about a half ish inch off, I think it would have been fine. So I like things like that. We are just thrilled with how this looks, the view in the kitchen. Again, it feels so plain without them. Another place that I've done something just a bit different and it was accidental is in my room. I one day wanted to change the fitted sheet. I have to change my fitted sheet all the time these days because I'm sleeping with a newborn and you know, there's there's spit up, there's all kinds of fun stuff. And I had my usual tan sheet in the wash and it wasn't dry and it was bedtime. Anyways, I put on this striped peach sheet and at first I thought it looked so mismatched. But then as I walk by my room, it makes me realize how although the color might be slightly off from the other colors on the bed, having a whole different pattern and color again i love it like ever since i've done that i've wanted to have this sheet on instead of my usual tan one it was accidental but it, it's another place that made me realize i should find some pattern something different than floral something that doesn't match and put it here all the time because it just adds another unexpected cozy layer we've been in this farmhouse for nearly five years and i think as long as i'm here i'm going to be pleating things painting things collecting things so join me as i continue by hitting that subscribe button thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse